Russia and North Korea's Treaty on Strategic Partnership does not violate international law, Russia's Sergei Lavrov stressed on Monday. The treaty is not secret, it is open. The entire text has been published. It does not in any way violate any provisions of international law, because it assumes, among other things, the provision of assistance to each other in case one of the countries participating in the treaty is attacked militarily, Lavrov said. Russia's position in terms of relations with North Korea is absolutely honest and open, Lavrov added during a news conference with his Kuwaiti counterpart Abdullah Ali al Yehya. North Korea said Tuesday its top diplomat is visiting Russia, in another sign of their deepening relations as rival South Korea and Western nations say the North has sent thousands of troops to support Russia's military operation in Ukraine. The US said North Korea has sent about 10,000 troops to Russia, who are expected to arrive in battlefields in Ukraine within the next several weeks. Что касается наших отношений с Корейской Народно-Демократической Республикой, то мы уже не раз говорили, что договор не является секретным, он является открытым, весь текст опубликован, и он ни в коей мере не нарушает никакие положения международного права, потому что предполагает, среди прочего, оказание содействия друг другу в случае, если на одну из стран участница договора будет совершено военное нападение. Так что здесь наша позиция абсолютно честна, открыта. Парламентские выборы, на них побеждает партия «Грузинская мечта». Если представители власти... South Korea's intelligence agency reports that North Korea plans to send a second group of military personnel to Russia, totaling up to 10,000 troops. Bloomberg, citing the intelligence agency, stated that the first group, made up of 1,500 elite special forces, is already training in the Russian Far East. Their transport to Vladivostok took place from October the 8th to the 13th. The report also points out that North Korea has sent a lot of weapons to Russia since August 2022. This includes about 8 million shells of 122mm and 152mm sizes, around 100 Hwasong-11 missiles and Bulsei-4 anti-tank weapons. North Korean weapons have already been spotted on the battlefield in Ukraine, with South Korean officials noting that these figures are much higher than previous estimates from Europe. After about a month of training at military facilities in Vladivostok, Usurisk, Khabarovsk and Blagoveshchensk, North Korean troops are expected to be sent to the front lines in Ukraine. According to intelligence, Russia plans to provide them with weapons, uniforms and fake documents to disguise them as residents of Eastern Russia. In North Korea, it is believed that the deployment of soldiers to Russia for the war against Ukraine allegedly complies with international law. However, the fact of troop transfer is not explicitly confirmed there, states Kim Jong-gyu, Vice Foreign Minister of the DPRK in charge of Russian affairs. According to Kim Jong-gyu, he drew attention to the rumors about the deployment of North Korean troops to Russia, which is recently drawing public attention in the world. He added that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of North Korea does not handle matters related to the Ministry of Defense and does not feel the need to confirm it separately. If there is such a thing that the world media is talking about, I think it will be an act conforming with the regulations of international law. There will evidently exist forces that want to describe it as illegal, I think, the official stated. Russian President Vladimir Putin, in his comments on this situation, claimed that such actions are allegedly stipulated in the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Agreement with North Korea. The Atesh Partisan movement has announced the mobilization of its agents into the ranks of the Russian armed forces, according to a report shared by the group on Telegram. The report claims that, for the first time since the full-scale war began, Russia has openly started drafting Ukrainians from recently occupied territories from military service. Agents from our movement took advantage of this and came to the military enlistment offices as volunteers. This will allow us to conduct operations within military units and gather more relevant information, the partisans said. 
According to Atesh, residents in the Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions are being forced to serve in the Russian military, which the group considers an international war crime. The Russians reportedly promised that the conscripts will not be sent to the special military operation area. But no one believes this for obvious reasons. If you have been drafted in the temporarily occupied Ukrainian territories, reach out to us and make the occupiers regret everything they have done, the partisans reported. Earlier in October, the Center for National Resistance reported that conscription had begun in the temporarily occupied territories. The draft campaign is set to last until December the 31st, with a target of mobilization at least 150,000 recruits. This number includes a significant portion from the annexed regions of Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia, Kherson and Crimea. The first conscription campaign in the occupied territories took place in the autumn of last year. As then, recruits are now being promised that their service will not involve participation in the special military operation. However, Center for National Resistance reports indicate that many conscripts were later coerced into signing contracts with Russia's Ministry of Defense and ended up fighting against their homeland. In a report issued at the end of August, Center for National Resistance suggested that residents in occupied regions were reluctant to join the Russian military. All regions have failed to meet recruitment targets for the Russian armed forces. The overall shortfall across the temporarily occupied territories is 60%. The report read, the situation is reportedly worse in the Zaporizhia and Kherson regions where Russians have managed to recruit only a few dozen individuals.